afternoon. Megan Triple, Yes Network. Coach, what's your overall general thoughts of this group as you guys enter this season? It's excitement. You know, we had, a, I think, a great summer of working through, um, you know, last season's uh, lessons. You know, we, we clearly faced a lot of adversity um, last year. I think it put us in a position to really dig into all the things that we can try to clean up and improve. I think we did a great job with the roster this summer. So just excitement about our team, our group, what the potential is, um, the optionality we have, and, uh, and you know, the personality. So I think we're really um, excited to build this thing and, and uh, can't wait to get on the floor tomorrow. Hey, guys. This is uh, one for each of you. I, Sean, I think the last time we saw you and spoke to you, uh, you basically said, we need to make sure that the culture is right and that everybody is committed to being here and all in. Uh, then KD requests a trade, and yet here we are. Um, how do you, I guess, reconcile those two things, saying we have to have everybody committed to being here and your best player wants out? And in Steve's case, I'm curious whether Kevin felt the need to come to you, and I guess also to Sean, and kind of clear the air um, if he's not all in and he wants either a new coach or a new GM or both, how does he re how do you reconcile coaching him or being his boss when that's the situation? I'll, I'll start. Well, first and foremost, I'm not his boss. So let me correct you there. We're partners in this. And if he wanted out and still wanted out, he wouldn't be here. So you talk about building a culture and you want people who have the conviction to be here and be part of something bigger than themselves. You heard Kevin this morning talking about um, the conviction that he has and, the, and his legacy at stake and, and wanting changes around the organization. Those are things that we addressed uh, all summer long and we'll continue to address those things. I mean, it's, not, it's never gonna be perfect. It's not a perfect situation, but it's how you um, you know, you have these championship characteristics and you follow those through throughout the off-season into the season and when adversity strikes, which it will, it always will, it's, it's pro sports, these things happen. And, you know, um, you know, how you respond to those things. And I think that's something that Kevin mentioned this morning and that's something that we're going to have to work on, you know, as, as we continue to build this roster and continue to, uh, throughout the season. Sean, to follow up on the right in the front here, to follow up on the culture thing. What's the difference between the culture now and the culture how it was at the end of the season, given all the same major players from top to bottom are here? Yeah. You know, uh, you guys have heard me say this before. I think your, your culture is constantly evolving. You know, it's, it's never going to be set in, in stone. It's not something that's finished. It's, it's not done. It's not complete. It should be continually evolving with your set of circumstances, your roster, where you find yourself. Uh, and we, where we find ourselves now is getting back. We've got our back against the wall. You know, we, we know uh, our expectations from the outside will maybe look a little different. There's plenty of naysayers out there. But uh, again, it's part of finding those guys that want to be part of something bigger than themselves. We prided ourselves six years ago on having guys that had a chip on their shoulder, having something to prove that were maybe forgotten about a little bit. Well, if, if we're being forgotten about and we can fly under the radar a little bit, that's, that's fine with us. But um, it's about having championship characteristics. That's what our culture needs to be about. And you heard Kevin this morning, and that's, that's reiterated throughout this. Uh, this organization, it's top to bottom. Every single person in here needs to pull their weight and do, it, do, what's, do what they're expected. And it was a great opportunity for us this offseason from coaching staff, front office, performance, management, uh, ownership, everybody to sit down and, and honestly reflect and say, look, are our processes right? You know, do we have the right people in place? Are we doing the right things? Are we just talking about it or are we actually, actually doing it? So a little bit of a self-audit without a doubt and of course all of us, you know, myself for sure, look in the mirror and say, okay, where do we get back to? You guys have been in the league a long, long time. What is it like though knowing that your star player at one point this summer wanted you guys fired? Well, that's pro sports, right? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of things that go on behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, 
we've both lived on that side of the locker room as well, right? So we know what happens inside the locker room, and that's completely fair. And, and you know, everybody's entitled to their opinions. And I think from us, it's not to hold a grudge against what what Kevin said, but it's a little bit of say, all right, if that's the way he feels, what's going on here? Like, what do we need to change? Is it personnel driven? Again, is it logistics? Is it processes? What is it? What can we do to get back to that? And I, I totally understand it's a frustrating season. It was. I don't know that there was anybody more frustrated than the two of us, you know? So uh, we're all in this, and we all know what's at stake here and what our goals are, what our ultimate goal is. Sean, can you uh, just, hi, uh, can you uh, give us a sense of what the discussions were like with Kyrie in terms of the contract extension, the franchise's comfort level with him now just being on a one-year deal? Obviously, normally when you've got stars, you're trying to keep them under contract as long as possible, and your other two are under long-term contract. So what's the... Uh, tell us about how you got to the point where he's only on the one-year deal opting in and how comfortable you are at this point with uh, him being on, on a one-year deal. Sure. Well, you know, obviously I'm never going to get into the actual contract discussions w with him and, uh, you know, his representation. But at the same time, they're, they're very open. They're very honest conversations. We knew what he was looking for. We obviously could not find a middle ground of, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, we're, we're happy that Kyrie is back here. Um, you know, I think I'm, I'm listening to the press conference that he had this morning, and my takeaway from that is, like, you know, he's committed. You know, he understands that, um, you know, in order for him to be a free agent and go out there and get what he rightfully wants, you know, he, he's going to have to show a commitment out here, and, and we're going to be happy to support him in any possible way throughout the season to, to, to make sure he's healthy and, and, and committed and, and ready to go. But there's a lot of unforeseen circumstances that led up to those um, those contract negotiations with Kyrie, you know, beginning of the summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with Kyrie, Kyrie being here. You know, I mean, I think we're going to see a, a very determined Kyrie Irving. There's no, we've already seen it this summer, so I, I'm excited. And, you know, Steve reiterated the same thing. We're excited to see what this group looks like. Hey, guys, I got one for both of you, and then the follow-up for Sean just with between Kevin's trade request and the, the ultimatum and everything, I mean, how much of that blindsided you guys versus, you know, maybe seeing it coming and, and off of that, how much of it could have been maybe prevented hindsight 2020? You know, were we blindsided by it? You know, not entirely, just simply looking at, you know, I think if you step back and you think about the season that was, and it, it, was, a, it was a very discombobulated season. It wasn't a season that we look back and go, oh, gosh, like we were close. You know, we were piecing it together. You know, I think there were 200 plus games lost last season to our rotation players. I mean, that's, that's a pretty tall order. <laughs> you know, if I'm asking, I'm asking Steve to coach, you know, a rotation that he doesn't even know what, what it's going to look like on a nightly basis. So did I, did I think it blindsided us? Um, I would have hoped it would never have got there, but at the same time, you know, I'm glad it did in, in one way because it's forced us to reflect on this and, and get back to what we what's important. Steve's fine, not talking. Okay. Um, and then just it seems like after Kevin made his trade request, um, everyone and their mother made you guys a trade offer. Just he, he knew that his own worth, obviously, you weren't going to give him up for nothing. I mean, with, with all the teams you talked to, I mean, did you ever feel like there was a day where you were close or within striking distance of some trade for him? Yeah, I think we were relatively close on, on, on several things. And, you, you know, you have to be able to have honest conversations, you know, with my peers out there. I mean, that's, that's my job. So I, I do have to answer the phone and, and, and listen to them and hear them out. But, you know, I also heard from plenty, G, plenty of GMs out there after the fact and said, yeah, we wouldn't trade them either. Like, there's, it's pretty difficult to get like for like. So I, I think we all realize that in this room. So. It's by either of you. Um, you guys talked about building the culture, rebuilding a culture, reestablishing one. Yeah, one player who had a trade request, another player who's been unreliable, another player who maybe has physical or mental issues getting on the floor. How can you reconcile all of those things at once? Just get to work. You know, there's no, uh, there's no easy way to – I can't sit here and diagram how we do that. We have to diligently every day work, communicate – set goals, uh, boundaries, um, you know, decide a direction. Uh, like Sean said, cultures are always evolving. You know, you can't, we can do all, you ask us, how's our culture? You know, ask me tomorrow. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that you have to invest in every single day. And it's basically a system of behaviors. How do you behave? What, uh, 
what do you expect? Um, so that's something that we all have to invest in every day. That's an exciting part about the job. I've always loved being on teams, always loved being on teams that got along and functioned at a high level. So that's the goal. And we have some challenges that we need to overcome. Um, you know, a brand, an, another group that's relatively new to one another. So we got to put time together on the floor. We got to find ways to connect and, and form understandings. But, you know, it's, uh, it's the daily work that, that gives you a culture. Hey, Steve. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Sean spoke about reflecting when a player of Kevin's stature kind of calls for you guys' jobs. But as the person who's coaching on a day-to-day -day basis, what's the reflective process like that for you? Like, okay, well, he said he doesn't want me to be his coach. What does that mean about your coaching style, and how did that inform your offseason in a way? You know, Kevin and I go way back. So, you know, families go through things like this. You go through adversity. You go through disagreements. You know, this is not new to the NBA. This has happened, you know, dozens of times. You know, I'm sure every organization has faced it. So, um, you know, it, it's a part of the process. It's a part of, of working in this business. It's super competitive. We're all, you know, prideful and we all have expectations. And when we get uh, dinged up like we did last year, you know, everyone's disappointed. Um, you know, so we, we, you know, we cleared the air and we spoke. Uh, we got on the same page. Like I said, we go way back, and uh, we got a lot to be thankful for and a lot to build on. So, you know, I'm glad we got it behind us, and he's been outstanding since we had our chat. He's come in and been amazing in our gym. I think he's put in a tremendous amount of work this summer, as have we, and so everyone's done their part. Now it's time for us to get on the floor tomorrow and come together. Hey, Sean. Um, obviously, well, I guess the question is, you know, do you worry about the perception of the organization and the ability to build a team after last year, you know, James Harden wants to leave, Kevin Durant wants to leave, um, and then you're in the headlines every day being sort of, you know, considered a sort of a chaotic situation. You know, when you're trying to then go forward and build a franchise, do you worry how you're going to convince people that, no, 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 it's really not that bad here and, and you do want to come play for this team? Um, I factor everything in, right? Like, I don't really worry too much about the hearsay um, because I know what happens within these walls here. I know the people here. I know the quality of the people that are here, top to bottom. I know the work that's being put in. Uh, if I was concerned about that, it would it would be a, a different different discussion. But I also think when people leave here and we hear then they come back into town or we hear what they've said whether it's in the media and so forth and they've spoken so highly about whether it's you know coaches performance just the way you know the brooklyn way what we do um i think that's that speaks volumes because my best recruiting tool is the players that come through here so everybody can onboard somebody everybody can send flowers everybody can say welcome to the franchise but the offboarding starts the minute somebody gets here that's pro sports so the second they're here from the minute they're not here, that's when you're offboarding somebody. So when they leave here and they say, wow, my time there was pretty special. They were honest with me. They were up front with me. They treated my family the right way. They did all that. That's what I pride myself on. And that's what this organization prides itself on. Um, I'd like to hear from both of you on this. You, you have had over your careers extensive experience in winning cultures and in building cultures and occasionally cultures that go sideways, both as players for your national team, management, Steve, you're an owner. Uh, I wonder what you lean into when things have gone sideways over your careers and how do you kind of retrack everybody or try to do your part to retrack everybody to kind of get back to where you were before? I think for me it's fundamental to be to simplify. So you go through a, view, a review process, you know, you communicate, you look back on what expired and what happened, and then you start to simplify. I think you want clear and simple actionables, you know, coming out of uh, disappointment or coming out of adversity. So I think that's been the foundation of this, is to look back and try to figure out what happened, and then don't overcomplicate it, don't overthink it, don't make grand, grandiose plans. Get back to the basic fundamentals that are clear, simple, attainable, that we can work at every single day. You know, the, Once you lay the foundation, you get to work under those parameters and you start to build something, then you can start to get a little more sophisticated. But you know, all great things usually are built on simplicity. Yeah, I, I agree with Steve. I mean, that's, 
that's probably been one of the fun things this summer to go back and do a deep dive and, and sit there and have conversations with one another and with our uh, respective groups and sit there and go, all right, let's, let's see where our holes were. But, you know, I, I, I won't speak for Steve, but I think both of us have, you know, been around some pretty high level players, coaches, staff members, you know, me, me for sure. I mean, Steve is one of those players I'm talking about, but to see how people lead their franchises and to, <clears throat> excuse me, and to take, you know, a little bit from whether it's Pop or RC or Pat Riley in, in, in my mind, you know, and, and say how they would have handled this and what their franchises have gone through. I mean, you know, that's all I can do is reflect on, you know, and say, okay, well, what they would have done and try and implement a little bit of that here. It's got to be reflect, it's got to be, you know, honest and true to what we're trying to do here in our culture. I, I can't make this the heat culture. I don't want to make this the Spurs culture. I have utmost respect for there, but this is Brooklyn and we've got to do it true to us. Right here in the middle. <clears throat> uh, Sean, one of the things that Kyrie said earlier today was that <clears throat> coming out of contract negotiations with you guys this summer, he, <clears throat> sorry. he felt that he uh, carried a stigma that uh, there's a lack of reliability with him there. He said he, stigma that you couldn't commit on him, uh, whether he could be committed to the team, whether he wanted to play or not. Um, was that something that you conveyed to him during your contract negotiations and was a factor in whether or not you ultimately re-signed him to a multi-year deal? And do you find him to be reliable for this team you know, going forward for this next season? Yeah, well, I, again, I won't get into the actual details of the contract negotiations. I mean, that's private. That's between myself and Kyrie and, and the, the, the group that was in the room there. But, you know, you weigh everything when you're looking at, at to spend that type of money or, or to be quite frank, any money where we find ourselves right now. You're looking to bring in, you know, those right pieces that are going to fit long-term, short-term, plug a hole for us. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, at everything and everything goes in there. Like, you know, for instance, how reliable is the guy? How, how is he healthy? What position does he play? Are there the needs that are, that are met there? So, you know, I, I can't tell you what was going through Kyrie's mind as to like, you know, whether or not he is reliable or not, but the, the point, all I can tell you is the work that he's put in this summer. I mean, you see him, he looks fit, he looks ready to go, and uh, that's exciting. When, knock on wood, our guys are healthy. We mentioned before having missed you know, all these games as a collective unit, not just Kyrie as an entire group. Yeah, that's hard. That's almost impossible you know, to have the success that you want and to, you know, to reach your goals if you're going to miss 200-plus games as an organization in one year. Sean, to that, I, I realize you don't want to go into specifics about the contract stuff with Kyrie, but this is the first time publicly he said, look, the organization said before last season, if I got the vaccine, my extension would be there. He made that choice. As an organization, a year later, how surprised are you guys that Kyrie made that decision, turned down all that money, and everything unfolded the way it did the last year? Well, so clarify this. So two summers ago when we were, you know, talking about contract negotiations, that was pre-citywide uh, man or citywide statewide mandates that went in. So once once the vaccine mandates came in and we knew how that would affect playing home games and so forth, then that was, that's when contract uh, talk stalled, right? So it, it didn't get, uh, you know, here's the deal, now take it back. That, that, that never happened. Um, Am I surprised that Kyrie turned down that type of money, you know, or what have you, this summer? I mean, not necessarily with Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie has shown that, you know, he's his own man. He has his own beliefs. He has his own conviction for that. So I totally respect that, to use his words. I mean, he said he's honored that, and we've honored that with him. So I, I respect that. And, you know, our, our whole mission is when the guys are on the court that they're competing at the highest level, and, and that's all we, we hope for Kyrie and, you know, 1 through 15, all of our guys. I have a two-parter for Steve and one for Sean, if I could get it. Just, Steve, do you have any reaction to the Robert? Is that a three-parter, then? No, no, it's two for you, one for him. Uh, double dipping. Uh, Steve, do you have any reaction to the Robert Sarver investigation findings and, and his decision to sell his stake in the Suns? You know, really, it's an it's a awful situation. Um, you know, I... I, I my basic comment is that I trust the league and its process. You know, I, it's really hard for me to make, um, you know, really in-depth comments on an investigation that I'm not, I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, privy to everything that was gathered and collected. But um, clearly from the outside, it was, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of growth that needs to be made, and the process the league has undertook is one that I believe in and trust in, and then we'll see where it nets out. You're part of an ownership group with him over in Mallorca. I mean, has the situation with the Suns come up at all with, with the people over there? Uh, you know, I'm not over there, and so, you know, for me, I'm so focused on the Nets that I haven't heard, but, I, you know, at some point there will obviously have to be a, a movement on one way or the other from La Liga, but, you know, I'm not really privy to that insight yet. Sean, you just talked about last season and, and filling holes in the roster. I mean, it looks like you have 12 guaranteed spots, and there's some, some options, I guess, in the coming weeks as to how to fill those final ones. Just it seems like you built the roster expecting everybody back. You know, what, what did you look to address, and, and are there any last-minute ads or, or last-minute holes, I guess, you still think need to be addressed? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're excited to see these young guys come in and, uh, and, and fight for opportunities in camp. I think that's, there's, a, there's a level of competition we'd like to instill throughout camp, you know, throughout the season, to be honest, you know, even you know, on, on this court, not just on the court at Barclays. So, um, again, I mentioned these guys have all come in with chip on their shoulder, whether it's you know, the Edmund Sumner, Markeith Morris, you know, TJ Warren, they've all got something to prove. I think for us, it's going to be exciting to see the development that's taken place over the, over the summer. I, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Nick and Dayron, you know, out there and seeing what they can do. I mean, they've put in the time in the court with our coaching staff this summer and really putting in long hours. So, you know, if you notice, you just look at their bodies. They've changed. They've matured. You know, um, and again, I don't know if there's going to be last minute changes. It's pro sports. Things change pretty quickly, but. At the end of the day, I'm excited to give give Nick and Dayron a shot out there and see see how they how they how they perform. But so far, so what we've seen, the work they've put in the summer, that's exciting for me. I, I just had one for for each of you right here, uh, Sean. You, I think you were just asked about this, but I was just trying to clarify. Ky Kyrie kind of said earlier that he felt like he'd been given somewhat of of an ultimatum between choosing between the vaccine and his job for, for the decision. Are, are you saying, I, I just didn't hear you clearly last time, are you saying that's not how it went or what, what were you saying? No, there's no there's no ultimatums being given here. I mean, again, it goes back to wanting people who are reliable, people who want to hear um, accountable, all of us, staff, players, coaches, you name it. So, I mean, there's, I'm not giving somebody an ultimatum to get a vaccine. That's a that's a completely personal choice, and you know, I, I stand by Kyrie. And if he if he wants, if he's made that choice. That's 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 his prerogative completely, and I, I totally understand that. And uh, Steve, when you hear uh, Kevin questions about culture and, and accountability last season, how do you make adjustments, and, and what are you doing to you know combat his concerns about last season? Like I said, you know, we just try to work every day and, and improve on the simple things that, that, that I believe in that not only it's, it's a similar for an individual as a group, you know, it's about how we all individually behave, what are our expectations, what's expected of us. Nothing's really changed from last year other than we faced too much turmoil, too much adversity to really continue to behave in that way. You know, you're changing 45 starting lineups, guys are injured. At the end of the year, I think it gets blown a little out of proportion because you lose. So then everything is heightened, everyone's emotional, everyone's frustrated. You know, looking back, we did a lot of great things last year. We survived a stretch of the season without, you know, our three stars. Um, you know, a lot of teams implode. So there was a lot of building blocks in that stretch, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of groups don't make it through. We made it through. And uh, so I think we, we, you get put under a microscope because you lost, but you don't realize a lot of the growth and a lot of the important things we invested in. You know, having said that, we also look closely at ourselves, at what we can control. What can we work on? What can we improve? And, and how can we be prepared for more adversity? You know, because I think sometimes you get, um, you get a unforeseen and compounded situation: vaccine, injury. Uh, we ma we make a trade, and, and Ben's not available, and you know, and, and Joe Harris is up for the year, and now you're in a position where you couldn't foresee, you couldn't plan for. So what can we control? What can we do? Not what happened to us. And so that's a big part of our process this summer is continuing to simplify, work, get after it every day with our guys, you know, reaffirm what's important to us, uh, work ethic, um, sacrifice, you know, fight, togetherness, all those things. And those are simple things that happen on your behavior by being in here every day during the summer, working with our young guys, when the vets came back in September, I think they feel it. They feel the gym's different. So, you know, we just try to focus on, like I said, clear and simple, attainable characteristics. And 
Uh, I thought this summer we controlled what we could control, and now it's a matter of us with the whole group doing it every single day. And the more days you stack on top, you, know, you give yourself a chance to come together and have a great team. Just working a little bit off of what Steve said, you know, the idea of culture can be a little bit of a nebulous concept. When you did do that culture audit over the summer, was there one specific apps, um, aspect, whether it be collaboration or work ethic or communication, where you felt you guys were a little bit deficient last year? You know, I, I think if we're going to be honest about those, you can always improve on all of those things you just said for sure. I mean, I think the communication piece is huge. I mean, anybody that knows knows me knows how important that is. I hate surprises. I mean, you can avoid a lot of them. So. Uh, when you're surprised by things that we should have already known or should have prepared for, you know, that, that's tough. But, you know, I, I think the biggest proof is going to be, look, how the guys come out here and play, how they perform. You know, you'll get to ask them three weeks into the season, a month into the season, three months into the season, and you'll get a sense of, you know, this is the identity of the Nets. This is who we are. This is how we play. Uh, is there a collective unity for the whole group? That's what we hope. You know, as, as Steve has said, Throughout, throughout this, this summer, teams win, and it's about being a team, you know? A uh, quick question for each of you. Steve, um, it looks like we're past the time of asking if Ben is available on a day-to-day -day basis he's going to play. Um, just He said he's got some run with Kyrie and Kevin this week. Just what does that look like, and how do you envision using him now that you finally get to see him on the floor? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to see Ben on the basketball court. He's such a unique player, unique talent. Um, you know, he's such a special player because of the amount of things he can do on the court. So defensively, he's so versatile. He rebounds. He's a tremendous playmaker. Um, he's big and athletic enough to, to get on the rim. Uh, he makes the game easier for his teammates at both ends. So that's the, the sign of a, of a great player. So I think he's a great fit for our group. Um, you know, he's going to handle the ball a lot for us, create for his teammates a lot. He's also going to take the toughest assignment defensively more times than not. Um, and so you add all those characteristics up and we're just here to push and support him. You know, he's got so much to give for our group and uh, we just want to help support him to get to his best level and have the big impact that we know he can have. He's a, an amazing player. Um, Mark Heath joked and said that he felt like he should have been here a couple of years ago as opposed to just getting here now. Just what's that relationship like with, with you two and what do you see his impact being on this team? Well, I, I think what he's done in the past sort of speaks for himself, you know, with, with the, the toughness um, that he's going to bring to our group. You know, we need a veteran leadership. Uh, he's vocal, you know. I, I, I love that. Somebody who's not afraid to um, not just hold people accountable, but bring the group together, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I don't think we're asking for somebody who's going to point at people and point out people. It's more about how do we rally the crew, crew and put your arms around each other and, and get a closer knit group. And, uh, you know, again, I'll be honest, I, I like adding people that have come from franchises that are doing something right. So what can we learn from them? You, you, you guys mentioned that you're not holding any grudges with Katie over anything that happened this summer and you understand it's post sports, but is there a concern that when you do reach these rocky points of a season, unforeseen circumstances, injuries, whatever may have you, is there a concern that he will still be as bought in and won't be looking to maybe reissue the trade request? You know, personally, I don't think that's something we should be concerned about now. It's about how we manage this on a, on a daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis. Like, do we communicate in practice? I mean, Kevin doesn't want to be surprised either, and ne neither do we. I mean, we're, he knows there's going to be ups and downs. But do we, how do we, you know, how do we combat that, you know, uh, whether it's that anxiety or, or the ups and downs, the pitfalls that happen with pro sports and so forth. And so as a collective unit, you know, how we manage those, hopefully there won't be surprises on KD's front, our front or any, but. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.